Hi guys, this is your Raj Shekhar from our Sai Medha Coaching Center. In this video, we are going to discuss about synchronous machine. You know already, generally we have AC machines topic. In that AC machine, we have a synchronous machines and asynchronous machines. Asynchronous machines alias induction machines. Generally, this is very important concept, especially for diploma and electrical students, like a our E set exam for A P N T S, like a K set for Karnataka, like a D set etc. Other than that, like a S S C J E electrical S S C J E. Other than that, R R B J E. Other than that, like a assistant engineer in TSPSC, APPSC, Public Service Commission assistant engineer, like a in Tamil Nadu and Karnataka junior engineer in KPCL, TNPCL, etc., etc. Like a for all diploma level competitive exams, this is very important, sir. We may expect five plus questions from this, whatever the examination, five plus questions. Generally, what are the topics we have in our synchronous machine? What are the topics? First of all, what are the differences between the synchronous machine and asynchronous machine? We need to know first of all. Actually, we have only one topic, which is that AC machine. That AC machine divided into two parts, right? What are the differences between synchronous machine and asynchronous machine? Then after, what are the advantages of stationary armature in our synchronous machine? This is important point, guys. Generally, compared to DC machine, in our synchronous machine, the stationary armature is very important. We are following that stationary armature. Then, what are the advantages of stationary armature? Even though we can go for what are the differences between synchronous machine and DC machine also for clarity. So difference between synchronous and asynchronous machine, difference between synchronous and DC machine. Then after what are the advantages of stationary armature? Then after basic principle of synchronous generator, synchronous generator alias alternator. So, what are the basic principles? Nothing but what is the magnitude of EMF? What are the direction of EMF, etc.? We need to discuss about these two points. Then after, after the construction of alternator, we need to go for windings. What are the different types of windings we have? Windings, nothing but like a what is full pitch winding? What are the disadvantages of full pitch winding? What are the advantages of short pitch winding? What is concentrated winding? What is distributed winding? What is uniformly distributed winding? What is integral slot winding? What is a fractional slot winding? What is single layer winding? What is double layer winding? What is balanced winding? What is unbalanced winding? Etc. 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 We need to discuss about these types of windings. In this very important pitch factor and distribution factor and distribution factor of uniformly distributed winding and distribution factor of fractional slot winding. These are very important, guys. Okay. 100% question whatever the examination 100% question from this after that now you know the windings then after we need to go for emf equation because the windings gives you emf right so emf equation we need to discuss about few numerical questions on emf equation very important for any competitive exam then after after emf equation here voltage drops in our alternator what are the voltage drops included then after what is the armature reaction very important this one armature reaction after that armature reaction what is voltage regulation voltage regulation what is direct method of voltage regulation? After that, after that, we need to go for characteristics of alternator. 
what are the characteristics of alternator we have like a open circuit characteristics short circuit characteristics zero power factor characteristics zero power factor characteristics then after then after can you tell me what are the different types of characteristics we have external characteristics internal characteristics load saturation characteristics etc these are very very important for us especially occ and dcc characteristics then after then after what are the topics we have still in our synchronous machine <coughs> after this characteristics indirect voltage regulation methods indirect voltage regulation methods what are the different types of indirect voltage regulation methods emf method or synchronous impedance method mmf method or ampere turns method portier triangle method or zpf method american standards association method and saturated synchronous impedance method the fifth one is the saturated synchronous impedance method very 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 important sir 100% they will ask you question for any competitive exam after this indirect voltage regulation method <coughs> now we need to go for parallel operation actually but before that what is hunting we need to discuss about hunting how we can eliminate the hunting up to this this is about the especially for alternators part after that we need to go for power equations very important 100% question sir power equations now we need to go for parallel operation parallel operation of generators this is a big topic actually we have a many sub topics in this parallel operation of two alternators parallel operation of alternator with bus bar under no load condition under loaded condition with effect of excitation with effect of prime mover input etc many sub topics are there many sub topics are there after that after that synchronous motor let starts with a synchronous motor again the basic principle of synchronous motor first of all because because the differences are same the advantages are same now we need to discuss about basic principle of synchronous motor after that windings are same emf equation same there is no armature there is a, there is a armature reaction for synchronous motor there is no concept of voltage regulation characteristics the same then after hunting the same then after we need to go for power equations of course the power equations also mostly same then after parallel operation parallel operation what is that parallel operation of synchronous motor with bus bar synchronous motor with bus bar with load without load effect of excitation effect of supply input all of this except and again we have a starting methods because our synchronous motor is not a self starting method self starting motor that's why we need to go for few starting methods uh, this is uh, our synchronous machine these are the topics okay so we need to discuss each and every point generally if you follow our class then after try to make a notes everything try to make a notes that is 99% enough for any competitive exam not only e set not only k set not only d set not only ssc je not only je for tamil nadu kerala and karnataka etc for everyone this is 99% enough even i will discuss few numerical questions if possible if you are a lucky person the same numericals with the same numericals will come in our examinations right sir let starts with the difference between the difference between synchronous machine and dc machine 